wondering how you can become better at running your business? Entrepreneurship can be stressful. There's too much to do and not enough time. If you're isolated in your daily decisions, have no fear. Success and balance are possible. Welcome to the Small Business Answer Man podcast, where you master the art of running a successful business using practical advice from experts who want to help you succeed. Now, here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome. We're glad to have you back this week again for another great podcast. I told you my goal this third quarter is to find people that would really help our business because as business owners, we're past that halfway point of this year. And now we're looking, what can we do to help our business yet this year? But I'm a true believer, whatever you do now makes a big difference going into next year also. So we're already starting to think about that. It's hard to believe, but that's what we have to do as business owners. We have to look forward and really see those differences. And today I think I've got that guest because we're going to have a great conversation. But would you share with them, Curtis, what problem will you help the listener solve? I think, you know, because what I'm known for is kind of one, uh, my favorite conversation is cash flow. Like the number one problem I see is people don't manage their cash flow. I mm-hmm. want to talk about keeping more of what you make. So everybody's chasing money, but the problem is it's like filling up a leaky bucket with holes in it. We've got holes in our bucket, which we call wealth transfer. So I want to manage your cash flow. I want to plug the holes in your leaky bucket so you keep more of what you make. Oh, this is going to be a great conversation. Today's guest is Curtis May. He's the host of the Practical Wealth Show podcast and the creator and owner of Practical Wealth Advisors. Curtis has been planning for individuals for more than 35 years, and he is passionate about helping his clients save money and live the very best life they can live right now. The primary focus of his financial planning firm is to help businesses and families become financially free by following the principles of wealth creation that have endured for centuries around the world. Curtis, it is great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Yes, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited to talk about cash flow because I talk about a concept that I want the business owners at the end of the rainbow to have a pot of gold there that they have there. So in cash flow is one of those areas that really kind of sets that up and getting them to think about it. But if you would, why don't we just go into that right away with cash flow Share with them your concepts and maybe your philosophy that you have there that will help them think about how they should really look at their cash flow in their businesses. Okay. So I will start with Curtis has no original thoughts. All right. <laughs> and uh, so, and I've kind of like, what I know is, is a combination of me trying stuff, stuff I've read, trying it and what I call criticizing it. Right. So yeah. I like and, that. Uh, so, I, but I I like to give people framework so you can get into it. So, the frame a lot of this framework comes from two things: the richest man in Babylon, mm-hmm. okay, and profit first, which is kind of like the rich man Babylon for business owners, right? Yeah. And and so you know one of the things is that because I used to you know I grew up in business, my family's in supermarket business, we're in tavern business, so I actually grew up in retail. And then, although I started my financial business in college, but one of the things I always thought that everybody else got paid and, you know, if there's any left over, you save it, you know, you save, you know, so it's because the gap accounting, traditional accounting is profits. No. Yeah. Revenue minus income equals profits. Right. And let me tell you, if you do that, you're going to starve to death. Right? So, and so what I learned from profit first was that revenue minus profit right you have to pay yourself first from your business you know when our business for me personally i say 15 percent of my gross revenue okay uh so revenue minus profits minus owners pay i pay myself you have to pay yourself like you have to figure out what your life costs because there's a thing gary didn't people they say i'm bootstrapping i'm just growing the business the business is there to serve you so you need to figure out what it costs to raise your kids, to what it, you know, run your household. And I think that if the business can't do that, that's your business talking to you. So you have other problems, right? You're spending too much money. Your revenue is too low. Your prices are too low. Your marketing's bad. I mean, you know, so you have to watch your numbers. People don't watch their numbers. And so you get that. So you, I'm really, and you should do a profit loss 
really, I do mine every week. So as a family, you should do a profit loss every month. And as a business, like every week, at least, right? And so then I set aside, here's the other thing. I learned to set aside the hard way money for estimated taxes. So I set aside 15% for that because, you know, they don't take that out and you could get a surprise. Oh, I had a good year. It's like, wait, you know, your account says you got $30,000. Great. You had a profit. You got to write a check for the IRS, $30,000. Where's that at? I didn't save that. So you have to save that. And then, um, you know, then you try to run your business on less. So I'll run my business on like 35%. Everybody's got to do it differently. But what we do is we manage it through different bank accounts, right? So it's kind of like the envelope system. But instead of using cash, you use checking account. So I have an account for income, just income. And then we flow it through, you know, operations, tax, profit, owner's pay, right? And so you say, and so what you do is it's really interesting if you will do that every time you get paid and get into a rhythm, savings becomes fun because like I need to, because you're trying, we talked about at the, at the beginning, you know, you want to be rich. If you shut the business down, you're still supposed to be rich. The, the business is there as a vehicle to create financial freedom. What is that? Passive income, greater expenses. Income follows assets. Even if you shut the business down, you're still supposed to be rich. Not hoping for this big payoff, you know, yeah. that may exactly. or may not happen. You know, you build it so you can not have to work and you don't have to retire from it or sell it because it works whether you're there or not. Yeah, that becomes the real key and getting business owners to really look at those financials and do something about them, not just look. Yeah. You know, really make those changes. You can really change that aspect. It's kind of interesting. Early in my career, at a point in my career, I mean, we had a lot of debt and we started listening to Dave Ramsey and we started following some of the philosophies of snowball debt and get some of that taken care of. And when I sold my business, the good part it was, we were already far down that path. So I didn't have to use all that money to just cover my debt. I was right. able to put right. myself in that position. I feel fortunate, I'll be honest, but we all have that. If we're a business owner, at some day we want to get the pot of gold that's in the rainbow. But the only thing is, is so many people think they're going to wait and they're going to put everything in their business and hope that day comes. What we're telling you, what I've heard from Curtis is we start that from day one by the systems we put in place and how we manage our cash flow. Because if you think about, you know, income follows assets, I heard it from Daniel Priestley. And so there's different asset classes. So if you break open the 400, 400, 500, here's what you'll see. They build businesses. They buy real estate. They buy paper assets. Okay. And so, I mean, and it's more to it than the stock market, right? Paper is yep. tax liens, paper, private lending, paper, notes. I've got clients that buy notes. You don't want to do the house. They just buy the mortgage and they get a check. So, and the emphasis is on buying while you have active income from the business, buying cash flowing assets. Like if it don't send you a check within 90 days, you got to have your own criteria. It's not an asset right? You're just investing for capital gains, hoping markets go up. And so my challenge with typical financial advice is built on hope, you know, hope the S&P does well. I hope, you know, I bought this price at this price. I hope dollar cost averaging work. That's all typical advice, but that's designed to create wealth for the Wall Street, not for you. Their goal is not make you rich, right? And so the typical advice is actually bad for business owners, right? Because most of it's like make money, your engine, put it in a cash balance plan, put it in a solo 401k, put it in a SEP, right? But now you put it in a straitjacket. You're in jail for the next 30 years for this someday one day thing, whereas you really want to store it somewhere where you have liquidity use and control because you need to be able to get it and reinvest it in a down payment for a business equipment or property or reinvest it, you know, in a, in a, in a business. I'm getting ready to re put a substantial business to helping me with my marketing and growing some marketing stuff like, you know, 20K, but it's, I think what I know what I'll make off of it, 
it's like, okay, well, I could leave it in a mutual fund and put it in a 401k, or I can invest in my business and, you know, quadruple my revenue by investing in what I know I'm going to work, right? I know I control, I know my conversion rates. I, you know, I know if I get in front of people, I know what I make in, in revenue. And, you know, most of your business owners, if you're listening to this, you already know your business or your real estate, if you're a real estate investor is making more money to S&P. But what happens is everybody else tells you you're crazy. And what I'm saying is Curtis is like, you know, two plus two is four. It's not that complicated. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, need to, you need to trust your instincts. If you, there's a great book, it's called The um, Millionaire Next Door. And in oh, The yeah. Millionaire Next Door, he asked that the, he surveyed these millionaires and said, look, how much credit do you give your wealth manager? I think in the book he calls a stockbroker. Uh, credence to you becoming a millionaire and the, the numbers are like 11 percent. you know they built a strong business they expanded their business they did what they loved they saved money they didn't go buy lamborghinis and you know they were good stewards of their resources and that's that's what makes money and so just that's good you won't lose money that way because you invest in what you know that's a great advice we're going to be right back we'll come back after this commercial break And now back to the show. Well, I think that's really important that they look at that cash flow, really thinking about how they're going to use their money and make it work for them. You talked about you want to invest because you're doing a very specific marketing plan to be able to grow your revenue. But also we have some of those business owners that looked at, they need some more effective strategies to increase their revenue. And you're doing it to increase your revenue with some marketing funds that's there. But they're worried about if they do invest those additional funds in advertising, they're not going to get the return. So what would you share with a business owner in that area? So I, I should do a talk called How to Grow Your Business 30 to 50% Without Spending Money on Advertising, right? Huh. And uh, so let me give you a resource. I just finished this book. So I, I'm a big fan of Jay Abraham. I always like to tell people where I, where I get stuff from, right? Yep. He's got a great new book out called Business Without Risk. And the first part, you talk about buying businesses without money. And then the second part is talking about what I'm about to share, right? On, on Jay's thoughts on, on growing your business, on geometry, right? So when you look at your business, there's three ways to grow revenue of a business, okay? And most of them don't cost money. So what you want to do is most people don't know what their, their um, cost per client is, what they make, right? Per, per your lifetime of a client is the word I'm looking for. And so what happens is if you look at your business and you say, okay, you've got these, what I call hidden marketing assets, a database you don't call, right? Customers that you don't invite to come back and, and buy from you again. Your prices are low. You don't have joint ventures. You don't cross sell. So if you look at the three ways to grow, way number one, get more customers. So what are you doing to do more, I call it lead generation because everything flows downhill from lead generation, okay? So lead generation, but most people, when you're getting marketed to uh, to buy this stuff, they're just selling you that one way. That's a hard way to grow, just generating more inexpensive, generating more leads, doing social media. Social media is not even in my top four things to do, okay? Right. So well, number one, so let's look at the three ways to grow then look at maybe if we have time, some, some strategy. So one, get more leads. Two, increase your conversions, right? So how do you increase your conversions? You know, most sales are made after the seventh to 11th contact. Most sales people give up after the second. Okay, and if you're in business, you are in sales. I had to break it to you. And uh, your number one function is marketing and sales in that order. And, and so if you can, so how do you fix that? When they come in, do you get their name and email? Do you put them on a website? Do you follow up with them? You just let them come in your place of business and leave? You're just wasting all your money. So you are advertising, you're wasting most of it because you let them come in and leave. So that's two, increase your convergence. Have a database. How are you following up? Three is what are you doing to increase your customer value, right? So one way, frequency. Could you get them to come in more often and buy stuff? That's that's one way to grow your customer value. You could raise your prices. You could create a premium offers. 
which I'm studying right now. Uh, you could, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, package, like, uh, would you like the biggie size that? Upsell, cross sell. Could you right. joint venture with somebody that has a similar product where y'all can combine your stuff and then you can tap into their market? And then the fourth way to grow is strategic alliances, joint ventures, right? And where you piggyback. And so none of those things cost money. I one time I was working with an eyelash place and she split with a partner and she said, well, I got, you have any emails? Have your old people? Yeah, I have uh, 1,800 emails. I said, have you ever emailed them to see if they want to come back for your service? No, I haven't. So, and I think she made like 2000 a client. So if you got a hundred to come back at 2000 a pop, you know, you already have the emails, you already have the internet service provider. I mean, it's like basic stuff. Sometimes we get so tired because we're making the donuts. We don't sit back and look at our business strategically. And so I think that you have to schedule time to think, you know, I, I schedule Fridays, two o'clock work on marketing is on my calendar. And I, and I try to think through this stuff. What can I do? Hope I can get another person with me. Cause I, you know, two heads are better than one, but you have to think about it. Cause you're the leader of the other the, of the deal or you and your marketing people. Yeah. That's some great advice there. And it really makes a difference because really you're not investing anything besides your time. Yes. You've got to give yourself that time to think, to be able to come up with it and then generate that because there's people already doing business with you. You're using your database. You're using the things that you have available to you. So what a great concept. Yeah, find you out know. why are you doing business with you? Ask them, why, why are you doing business? You know, and you want to be able to answer the question. This is the start of the first one. What Dan from uh, Dan Kenny calls a unique selling proposition. Why should sure. they choose you? Versus any and all the choice they have, including doing whatever they're doing now or doing nothing. Like if you can't answer that, you're a commodity and people shop commodities. So you have to be able to answer that. And then the first thing you can do is once you get that phraseology, you integrate that into your marketing and that will boost your conversions. Great advice. Let's talk on, let's, it's really on the same thing, but a little bit different of how they can improve customer retention. Cause we're talking about here, these are current people that they have already in their marketing. And when we create loyal customers, number one, they keep coming back to us. And really that becomes a nice cycle because it's a recurring revenue. It may not be at a subscription type, but they keep coming back and doing business with us. So how can a business enhance its revenue um, in those areas or really looking at I, that? Listen, I would have them create a subscription yeah, true. model. Okay. That, that, so now you've made, you know, cause that, uh, I mean, everybody else is doing what Amazon does it. Everybody else is moving to a subscription model. So is there's not many businesses that can't do that or a newsletter or something they subscribe to. You should figure out how to do that. Don't say it doesn't work for my business. That's lazy. You got to figure out how, how could I do that? Okay. I think the other thing is I was, I was at a conference once uh, event and it was, um, what is his name? Um, Gla De uh, Glazier Kennedy, Gla Bill Glazier, right? And so he talked about retention and in the book, The Ultimate Marketing Guide by Dan Kennedy says, he talked about retention as a profit center, right? Mm. Because so, and you'll see reactivate, like he, this, they had, he, this guy, he said he had 26 separate and distinct reactivation campaigns for customer retention. I remember right. looking at my journal going, how many do I have, right? <laughs> he had like 15, 20 customer acquisition strategies. J. Abraham said there's 87 different referral strategies. Like we don't do our homework, okay? And uh, uh, so even as I'm, so I'm actually the financial guy that understands this stuff because I see your business as your business investment, right? So I love integrating this stuff into our conversation. And I like to talk about how do we integrate your money and, 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 and growing your business. But I think also, for example, it's, it's the service. Like right now I do, I try to do um, five, what I call forum calls where I just call people up. How's the family? So forum is just family. How's work going? What you do for fun? What you got planned for the summer? Uh, to recreation and M is sometimes something I can serve them comes up. But what happens is it's like, I don't have agendas. Most times it's a phone call, not even a zoom. 
and they just appreciate that. And every probably about 30% of the time, hey, look, I need this. I just came to some money. I, you know, can you talk to her? I need a friend of mine. Can you come speak at to my my group? If it's like a real estate office, hey, I need you to come speak to my group. So you can kind of make stuff happen if you stay in touch, if you build, you know thank you cards. Like I, I use a service called send out cards, right? And I, they, I put them in a campaign where they get a thank you card. They get a birthday card. They get a, we appreciate referrals. And I email them at least three times a week, you know? So, cause you want to stay top of mind. So I, I don't, you know, cause you know, my mind is when, the, even if they're not my client yet, like when a student is ready, the teacher will appear. So I want, you know, I need to own the, the slot in your mind about when you think about certain things, I want Curtis to come up. And so you want to be top of the mind with your people. But, and there's like with AI and with good, you know, CRM systems, most of this stuff you can automate. And so you have to automate a lot of that stuff. And what you'll find is that, you know, because it's easier, it costs more money to get a new client than to keep an old one. Sure. You know, so let's retain them. And then what are you doing, for example, to orchestrate referrals? And I hope they give you a referral. Where do you have events? Do you have prizes? As a dentist's office that I go to, did I study? So I get these texts. I'm like, wow, I'm looking at the last, every month, it's like we're giving away some grill, right? The month before that was beast chairs and whatever. And now you, you who I may refer, you get a, to put your hat in a draw. We won one one time. I was like, all right. I need to do this, you know? So I'm, I'm thinking about how can I do this? I got people all across the country. Can I do this virtually and create a drawing? But I pay attention and I draw from other people's businesses to figure out how can I implement this in my business? So I think you just have to be curious and think. You gave some great strategies there. One I want to touch on though, and I want to get your feedback and because I heard business owners, they heard it and then they was like, oh, that's too much. And you said, Three times a week, email your list. Yeah. Because when the teacher is ready, you know, the student, or when the student is ready, yeah. the teacher okay. needs to show yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Give uh, your philosophy there, because I'm a believer in that too, that you've got to stay top of mind. Will they read every email? No. But the thing is, is when they're ready and you've been there, but if you only do it once a month. Oh, that's too far away. Too, I mean, most times much. they don't read. I think my open rate is maybe 20%. Sure. But I've had people that I had a guy that was a client. So one of the areas I work with is insurance. So he lapsed his policy like four or five years ago. So, but he was on my list, on my list. And I had a, a workshop. He came, I hadn't talked to him in like three, four years. He out the blue came, brought his son, went up. I said, look, I, you, you messed up before. So I'm gonna give you some homework for I'll let you work with me again. He did that. I was able to, you know, get him back on board and it was worth, probably like eight grand in revenue. Right. And, but he didn't think, I said, I'm sorry, I haven't taught you in a while. He says, well, get your stuff every week, you know? So when people don't talk to me, they feel like they talk to me. I mean, I said, I do, look, I do a podcast every week. Okay. I view podcasting as, I don't view podcast, my podcast as leisure. -ation. I view it as nurturing. So I view it as a nurture, keep in touch. And I do, you know, my guest or guest speak, I view that as lead generation, but I view my show as I've always viewed it as like an annual review every week where I'm staying top of the mind, trying to give valuable information. And uh, I think you can do it. So a lot of things I do is I will see, I'm the curator, right? So I I watch, I, I'm a, if anybody does Colby, I'm a seven out of 10 fact find. So I, I will consume information. So if I see a good article, if I see a good video that's short or short, I will copy and paste it. I'll take the, I'll copy it right now. I would send it out. Now I send it to my assistant and she sends it out, put a little blurb to this. And so a lot of it's not using original contact. It's just thought stuff I thought was interesting that I've re-forwarded out. So again, that's some good stuff. If they watch it, they're really, oh man, I just saw that thing you gave me. That was awesome. Thanks so much for sending it. That, you know, and it wasn't my content. I just, I'm a good curator because a lot of times we have to curate stuff because they're busy, they're working, they're living their life and they don't pay attention to that stuff. So if you're thinking about them trying to solve their problems, that's what you get paid for. You get paid for solving, entrepreneurs get paid for solving problems. So you want to be think concerned about not what you want, but what they want. And then 
if you're aware of their problems, when you see stuff, you send them. Or, or if you know them personally, send them an interesting article. Hey, I, I was reading this. I remember our conversation last week. And you can forward it to them or send them a LinkedIn article. It's just caring about other people. Yeah. And what, really what it is, is back in the day, they called it TOMA, Top of Mind Awareness. Yep. And, you know, the radio stations would always try to get you to do a ton of advertising to be Top of Mind Awareness. Nowadays, with our email list, that's really what it is, is you're staying top of mind with them when you're emailing them consistently. And then when you send out things like sending out cards with their birthday and things of that nature, even though it's set up and it comes from someone else, the thought that you would be willing enough to do it and put it out there becomes they see they feel special. They, yeah, feel they still are they still good. I wish I went to the office like three months later, still had the card I sent them on the, on the, on, on, yeah. on the mantle. Or at one time I had a client that had a baby. So I, I just figured out how to do this. They put it on Facebook. So I took the pictures of the couple and their new baby. I put it on a cut, not do it. I'm trying to send out cards, but I took a custom card. And then I sent them the picture, congratulations, with their pictures of the card and like a baby toy. Boom. Yeah. From my phone in in literally under five minutes, right? And so they sent me a picture with, with the baby, the toy next to the baby. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they love me because my clients love me. But exactly. but I, I care, but it was, you know, a nice thing to do. Sometimes you have to have a technology, but... You know, I try to, I don't, I'm trying to even get more intentional about it. Cause you know, as my business has grown, I've gotten busy. And so I've been trying to, you know, another thing, get help. You can't be the chief cook and bottle washer. I have two, I have a transaction coordinator that helps me with the, with the paperwork and I have two assistants, right? So only thing I try to do is what moves the needle in the business and everything else I'm trying to delegate. And it took me three years of people telling me that every time we had a meeting, a coach of mine, <laughs> before I would, oh, I don't know, I'm not busy enough. How much is it going to cost? Can I afford this? Trust me. I, you know, <laughs> I interviewed somebody from Reva Global. It's the best money you ever spend. I, I set aside some money to invest in an assistant and they literally tripled my activity, which tripled my income in like 90 days. Made a difference because you were doing your unique ability to think your zone of genius, a couple different ways to stay out there. Yep. And you're staying in that now and doing what you do best versus all that administrative. Listen, that's the number one thing you can do. Like, hear me, guys. That's that's is is just working your unique ability. I try to look if it doesn't. I had a mentor say it was named Bill Walsh. She said, listen, if you want to make a million dollars, that's five hundred dollars an hour. Right. So anything that you put your hand on any piece of paper you touch that it ain't worth five hundred dollars an hour, you're losing money. So you know, and Tom Hopkins said, "Look, and unless it's therapy, you need to hire someone else to do it." You know, so washing cars, cutting grass, somebody can be hired. That's my philosophy. <laughs> Great philosophy. Curtis, it is great sharing the information and some great information that you've shared. It always comes quick when I have the guest on and we're kind of in that conversation. But before we wrap up, number one, I think you have a call to action that you're willing to share with the audience that we'll put in show notes. Um, can you share a little bit of what that yeah, is? Yeah, so I want to, so we really, you know, what I work with, what I'm known for is helping people really with five things, figuring out kind of where they are cash flow wise, understanding what you like and don't like, making sure your money flows. And I'll show people how to be the bank in their personal finances, just so you know, that's actually what I do. But I, it's all in my mind connected, right? So I have a report called, um, what is it called? Uh, the value of liquidity. I'm big on one of my principles that I teach is having six, 12 months of cash in, in yes. liquid forces, sources. So I have a, a, a report called the value of liquidity. So if you will text all one word, all caps, be the bank to five, five, four, four, four. Uh, it says be the bank, all one word to five, five, four, four, four. It'll send you out our report. And then guys, just, if you like, if you want more of the madness that is, that is Curtis and how we help people, you know, create wealth outside of wall street, just check out our, our the practical wealth show or the YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, in our website is practicalwealthsolutions.com. We're going to send you, uh, a, a, a giveaway with another report, the five principles of personal finance uh, that we'll have for your show notes. And guys, if just educate yourself, I'm a financial educator. Yeah. 
Well, I appreciate you because that's the thing is too many of them are not educators, but I can see the difference already just through the conversation. You know, we didn't really talk about the wealth. We talked right, about right, right. You grow your business. So you will have wealth. Right. So a little different change there, right? Out the, um, out the no such thing as wealth management. You have to create it. Like you got to yeah. make money and you got to save 15, 20% or more of what you make. Do that. You're halfway to the winner's circle. Then you can figure out how to deploy it. That's great advice. So we'll have all that in show notes. So please check out his information. Some great things there. I've looked at website and some of the other things. You've got great information up there. Before I let you go, though, I've got to ask you this question because I ask every guest, what's your best advice you would give the business owner? Understand what business that you're in, which is the marketing business. Okay. So I don't care what you think you're doing. You can never take the gas off the marketing of your thing, of your be a marker of your thing, not do the thing. And then I would say, say 15, 20% of your gross income. Yeah. Great advice. Again, check out his website, check out the download that's available to you. We're going to have all that in show notes for you. My action I'm going to give you is look at your cash flow and really dig into it and start asking yourself, what changes do I need to make? Hopefully you're already paying yourself, but what are the challenges you have in that cash flow statement? And really dig into that. We talked about that earlier on and really decide. Yeah, I love what he said. Your business is for you. It's for you to create that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You're creating the economy. You're growing the economy. You're helping employees by paying them and employing them but make a difference for yourself too. Don't let yourself just be out there because that's what I hear from business owners. They're stressed, they're overwhelmed because they're not doing it for themselves. They're not looking at the bigger picture. And really that becomes the real key. So come back next week. We'll have another great guest and we'll really keep this going because what I told you is what we're going to do in third quarter sets us up for success for the rest of this year, but then we carry it on into next year. And it'll be here before we know it. It's hard to believe we're already in that third quarter of the year. So thanks for joining us. Curtis, thanks again for being on the podcast. And let's go out and make it a great day. That's all the time we have for this week. To continue your journey, head over to smallbusinessanswerman.biz to access the tools and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with someone who would benefit from listening. That's smallbusinessanswerman.biz. Until next time, remember... When you find the right solutions, your business grows and you get your time back.